The principles of design are fundamental guidelines that help a designer achieve excellence. They are not rules. Principles of design are expressed visually through the use of the elements that we have already mentioned. Line, form, space, texture, pattern, color, size, and fragrance. Most of the time, the use of principles of design follow the laws of nature. They're organized so that we can think about what to do first and then what to do next and so forth. Principles of design is defined as the various concepts used to organize or arrange a structural element. The primary principles include balance, proportion, harmony, unity, dominance, rhythm, and contrast. The proportion principle has the secondary principle of scale. Dominance has secondary principles of focal point, emphasis, and accent. Rhythm has depth, repetition, and transition. And the contrast principle has variation, opposition, and tension. Proportion is defined as the relationship of the units in a composition to each other in size, quantity, and degree of emphasis. We look at this composition, for instance. We see the vase. The vase is a given. The container is a given. That container is a certain size, and that tells us that we have to have enough size in our other materials to uh, be in proper proportion. You've probably heard somebody say that the height of a flower should be one and a half times the height of the container. That does work with a lot of things. However, when the material is very thin and very delicate, then we can extend the line much further. If this line was only one and a half times the container, the design would seem uh, inadequate for the container. So we, that's why we say that principles are guidelines and not rules. Our guideline allows us to go higher. When this line is over here on this side, and this material has a complementary line on the opposite side, but a different size, then we're creating asymmetrical balance. Balance is the next principle of design. Balance is defined as a state of equilibrium and is achieved when the components of a design are so composed that they give a feeling of stability. If we draw a line down the central axis or the vertical axis, of a design, we can almost always know that asymmetrical balance is composed of different materials on either side of that central axis. Different quantities, different kinds, and different positions. If we are going to have a central axis on a design such as this, where the, the amount of materials are the same, the position's the same, the colors are the same on both sides of the central axis, then we see an example of symmetrical balance. As long as we understand balance, we can create the type of balance that our customer wants. We can create the type of balance that's appropriate for the setting where the design's going to be placed. The placement of the design can be any place. And sometimes balance has a great deal to do with how appropriate and how pleasing that design looks. There are basically two kinds of balance other than symmetrical and asymmetrical, and that would be physical balance and visual balance. We're talking today about visual balance, which is what we see. But physical balance means that 
the design is stable. It's not going to tip over, even if it doesn't look right. Think of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. That's a good example of physical balance. You cannot walk up to that building and lean on it and push it over. It's not going to move. It's stuck in the ground tight. It's secure. But visually, it doesn't appear to be balanced properly. So we need to train our eye to see good examples of asymmetrical and symmetrical balance, as well as good examples of visual balance. The next principle of design is focal point. That is very well represented in this composition with the two sunflowers stair-stepped above each other. And the color of the flower and the size of the flower both attract attention to this central point. And that's what a focal point is. A focal point is that place where all the stems come together. But the focal area is very well established here. It's emphasized with this leaf uh, below it. And these lines frame, basically frame the focal point and call attention to it. And then, of course, this long vertical line, if, you, if this appears to be heading up, then it's coming out of the focal point. But it also could be thought of as entering the composition at the focal point or just behind the focal flower. In some designs, such as this, we don't have a strong focal point. The word point is singular. And that means one object or one flower or two flowers so close together that it seems like one point. But in quite a few designs, we have a focal area which encompasses more material that's at that place where stems come together, but it doesn't look like a bullseye. It just gives a feeling of stability. We know all the stems are coming in on this design into the focal area. And so it's proper to say focal area as opposed to focal point. Another principle of design is rhythm. So what is rhythm? Rhythm is defined as the visual movement throughout the design, usually achieved by means of repetition. And so we have one kind of rhythm going vertical here with one, two, three, four pieces of vertical material. We have another kind of rhythm curving out here to the side with three pieces of material. Repeat, repeat, repeat. We have another kind of rhythm here with two flowers, boom, boom. And over here, the foliage curving down this fern. Repeat, repeat, repeat. The flower on this side is being repeated again. The curve of the stem is being repeated again. This design expresses a lot of rhythm. Comparing these two designs, we see rhythm often more easily when materials are grouped together and the same material is seen again and again. In this design, the materials are not grouped. They are dispersed throughout the design. Rhythm is what gives a floral design some feeling. So rhythm is um, important. It gives a feeling to the design and it's easily created by repeating the materials. Depth. Depth is that in and outness of materials so that the design does not seem flat. If your design looks like it's had a haircut and it's perfectly flat without depth, that design will probably be boring because depth gives a feeling of luxury to a design. The two sunflowers are stair-stepping forward and this leaf is coming even more forward. So there is a quality of depth in that design. If you look at this traditional design, even though there's not much space here, it's easy to perceive that there's, there are several blossoms 
in front of other blossoms as you come forward. And you can perceive, even from one side, that the opposite side is finished off and also has flowers. So that makes that design seem a little more expensive and have a little more feeling of luxury. The next thing is transition. Oh, I love transition. Transition is something in between. Transition uh, means that you are using a particular material in a composition to connect two things that are kind of opposite or very different from each other. In this design, the transition material is the pink flower because we have interesting columbines outward and upward and we have various green foliages but this little pink flower is kind of going all the way through and kind of connecting everything so that is kind of making a transition through the design just the position of one of these flowers above the other it's like stair steps one step, two steps, three step, that's another form of transition. You're transitioning the eye into the very center point of that design. We move next to harmony. Harmony can be expressed through contrast and it can be expressed through blend. Blend is probably the most common way of expressing harmony. And so in this design, the strongest harmony is color harmony because we have the yellow, the brown, and the in-between, we have a little soft green and we have brownish green. And over here we have yellow that's a little deeper, uh, a little darker so that it kind of heads into, transitions into the brownish green. The container is brown. The stems of our vertical line are brown. So there's definitely a, an example of a feeling of harmony with color in that particular composition. So harmony is uh, actually defined as the aesthetic quality created through the pleasing interaction or combination of components in a composition. Unity. It means a oneness of purpose, thought, style, and spirit. Unity is the organization of components into a harmonious whole, resulting in a cohesive relationship of all parts. So I think color-wise, texture-wise, sensibility-wise, we have a feeling of unity in this design. It's much more rustic and totally different than this one. But this design also, I believe, has a feeling of unity. It's more frilly, it's more fussy. This looks a little more feminine. This seems a little more masculine. All of these things can be considered uh, when we're wanting to make a feeling of unity. Contrast is defined as the striking difference between two elements and can be achieved in many ways. Using variation, opposition, and tension within your designs can create an appealing final product. However, contrast within an arrangement can be overdone. Select your contrasting elements carefully to draw the eye to the location you intend within the arrangement. Variation is used to break the similarity of an arrangement. For example, if you are creating a romantic arrangement using light pink roses, you can add variation by placing a single red rose into the arrangement to add the expression of love into the design. Opposition is used to create a higher interest. You can enhance a design by using items with opposing structure or colors. For example, using straight and wavy lines within the design or selecting two high contrast colors, such as blue and orange, can create very pleasing designs. 